When Jeff Brown was hired last December, this game in particular was immediately circled. Well, on Saturday, the Louisville Cardinals have a chance to snap a losing streak against the Kentucky Wildcats on today's episode of the Locked on Louisville podcast. We discuss what's at stake, the deciding factors, and players to watch for your Cardinals in this year's installment of the Governor's Cup. So with that being said, let's get right on into the show. You are Locked on Louisville, your daily podcast on the Louisville Cardinals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome into another episode of the Locked On Louisville Podcast. I'm your host, Dalton Pence. Today's episode brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On College for $20 off of your first purchase. Well, I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving holiday. Um, a lot of stuff to be grateful for. One thing that um, I'm very thankful for is you all making Locked on Global your first listen of the day. Um, just a reminder that the show is free on all streaming services five days a week, your team, every day. It's almost here. The game that we've circled since Jeff Brom was hired at Louisville, the Governor's Cup regular season finale, is just around a day away. We'll talk about the Cardinals' um, opportunity to break the losing streak against the Wildcats, deciding factors in this matchup, and the players to watch for the home team. It's been a very successful season, nonetheless, for this team. Sitting at 10-1, and one, top 10 in the country, already clinched a berth to play in the ACC championship game next Saturday in Charlotte against Florida State. Um, but if you ask the majority, almost pretty much all of Louisville fans, um, you know, what are your goals this season? You know, if you were to ask them that before the season, they would tell you, um, you know, with this schedule, win at least eight games, but they're also going to tell you beat Kentucky. Let's be honest. This has been a rivalry that has been very lopsided over the past couple of seasons, uh, over the past half decade, pretty much. Kentucky has won the past four matchups against the Cardinals dating back to 2018. Um, the first in that series, well, the 2-10 and 10 season in 18 was a disaster. They embarrassed Satterfield's team in 2019 in Lexington. 2020 was the COVID year. The teams didn't play. 2021, another embarrassment for Louisville, but this time at home where Will Levis um, did everything that he wanted to. And then now... Um, we look at 2022 where it was a lot closer, but what was still lost by double digits. And I mean, it, it wasn't a pretty performance, but Kentucky still won. That's truly all that matters. So the cards have a chance to break the streak. And I think that this game in particular was, I mean, it's circled every season, but this one was circled in a bright yellow highlighter because of who is now leading this program. One of the main concerns, complaints about Scott Satterfield was that many Louisville fans feel like he just didn't get it. He didn't understand the true nature of this rivalry. He didn't understand um, how critical it was to beat Kentucky because every single time that his team took the field against Mark Stoops' team, it didn't go well. Louisville seemingly came out unprepared. They came out um, not as energetic as Kentucky, and I'm watching on the other sideline to where there's a ton of juice from the Kentucky sideline. Um, you could tell that this game means a lot to them, and you obviously were shown that by them hitting Louisville in the mouth almost immediately in every single one of these games against the Cardinals, and it was just extremely frustrating watching Louisville treat this as it was just any other game. And Kentucky treating this like it is a true rivalry. You can believe and take it to the bank that regardless of what happens on Saturday, because it's a rivalry game, anything can happen. Regardless of what happens, you will not be able to say that this Louisville team will not have the motivation to come out there on Saturday um, like a normal Louisville team would. Personally, for me, you know, Jeff Brom is a guy that is from this city. He has played at this university. He has coached at this university. He 
gets it. He understands this fan base. He understands this program. He has a tremendous pulse of what we're trying to accomplish here, what is you know of the utmost importance, and beating Kentucky is at the top of the list, as it is for the school down the road in Lexington. It's how rivalries work. But for some reason, one way or another, the past four games in which this program or in, this, in which these past two programs have played, one of the programs has shown an extreme amount of fire and passion, and the other one, it looks like there was just, hey, it's another game. That's not going to be the case this year. Now, obviously, you still have to go out on the game and you have to play well. I guarantee, and you know, I've talked to some people that have essentially told me, look, this team is ready, they're focused, they're mentally locked in to the um to the objective at hand and you know they want to beat Kentucky bad and that seems like it should be a given right but it just hasn't been in years past or even if it was it wasn't displayed on the field it wasn't displayed on the sideline etc so there's going to be a ton of passion how there was you know before 2018 so I'm excited for things to get back to that Another reason why this is such a key game, from an optics level, it's huge. Because now Louisville is a favorite in this game against Kentucky. Now, depending on who or what service you utilize, um, it depends. But they're anywhere from about a six and a half to seven and a half point favorite as of Friday morning, right? If Louisville were to win this game, number one, it keeps you in potential playoff contention, although at this point in time, you still need some help. But if you want to have any shot on making the playoff, you've got to win this game, and there's no there, there's no wiggle room there. It is pretty cut and dry. If you win, you're still in the conversation. If you lose, you're out, and you're still you know in line to fight for a New Year's Six Bowl. Um, and then not only that, you get the Governor's Cup trophy back. You have a winning streak against Kentucky. Optically, it looks good that you beat your rival. It helps in-state recruiting. I mean, there's a lot of benefits to winning. But let's switch the argument. There is a lot at stake if you were to lose this game as well from an optics level. Kentucky hasn't been the greatest this year. They're sitting at 6-5, and five, um, and they haven't scored over 30 points since they beat Florida. Um, back in, I want to say it was September when they played the Gators um, in that matchup. September 30th is the last time they scored over 30 points. Defensively, they have struggled. They have lost two straight games. Um, they've lost five out of their last six games, and their only win came to a Mississippi State team on the road who is currently 5-6. and six. Um, They lost to South Carolina just last week to where they probably have one of, if not their worst performance of the season. The defense has been struggling. This team in general has been struggling. Louisville has been playing very well. If you were to lose this game, optically, it looks bad because you're essentially saying, well, now Grant said things happen. It's a rivalry game. But you know how the SEC bias works. And I don't want to have to consider a hypothetical in which a 10-1 and Louisville team, uh, arguable top two, three at the very least, uh, or three at the very worst, best team in the conference, losing to a Kentucky team that is six and five. Number one, you wouldn't hear the end of it from Kentucky fans that would say, well, no matter how good you did, we still, you know, we're still the top dog. You can't beat us. And then there's the SEC portion of it that says, well, it's the SEC. It just means more. Look, Kentucky um, is – still a better team, better program than Louisville because of the conference that they play in. And as sort of flawed as that argument may be that Louisville just hasn't played anybody this year and the strength of record, strength of wins, because go to Matt McGavick's Twitter and check out the statistics that he's posted because let's be honest, facts do not care about your feelings. Facts don't factor in emotion. And it just goes to show you Statistically, Louisville has had a better strength of resume than Kentucky, and there's no debating that. But to Kentucky fans, their SEC schedule is just completely leaps and bounds better than Louisville's despite playing, you know, or having not scheduled one game against a Power 5 team in the regular season outside of Louisville since Mark Stoops has been there. 
but that's an argument for a different day. I say all that to say this. If you lose this game, it fuels that argument once again that, hey, look, Kentucky is still better despite the record, and and you're still in a spot where the SEC is completely dumb. Now, the SEC is the best conference in college football. There's no debating that. But it's this argument that, oh, Kentucky is better than Louisville, and they're only winning less games because of the schedule that they're having, although it's not necessarily clear that Kentucky's schedule is actually better than Louisville pound for pound. But – Conversation for a different day. Let's get into the matchup. Deciding factors. There's going to be three of them, in my opinion. We're going to talk about those when we come back after talking about our friends over at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or you get your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Motors. Guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Hey, Cardinal fans. Thanks again for making Locked On Louisville your first listen of the day. Don't forget, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. When you dive into this matchup um, under the surface, there's a couple of deciding factors that will um, show why a team is triumphant in this particular game. Number one for me is the mental side of things, the execution. Um, it's a rivalry game. You have to throw a lot of things out because of the emotions that ride with a rivalry game. The first deciding factor is going to be which team utilizes the high emotions in the most positive way and how it's going to translate onto the field. Because you can want it more than the other team. But if you don't go out there and play smart and execute the game plan and score points and get stops, then it truly doesn't matter. You have to be able to go out there and, yes, have that passion, have that hunger to go out and win this game, but you have to do it smart. What does that mean? Um, you know, limiting penalties. That's a big thing. Um, you know, there's going to be a, a, a good amount of high effort, you know, limiting the holdings, limiting the pass interference calls, offsides, false starts, etc. Emotions are going to run rampant in this contest. The main thing for me is going to be which team can use that to its advantage in the most positive way. And I think that that's something that Kentucky has been very good at doing in the past four games of this series. The main reason why they have won all four in three of them in true blowout fashion. So that's one thing that I want to see from Louisville that's going to be a huge deciding factor is, hey, look, let's go out there and play hard, but also play smart. Let's you know stay in the moment, not look too far ahead, and just finish play after play. And that's the main thing here for me is the mental side of things because rivalry games, that's why I don't really like to look at spreads in a rivalry game or I don't like to look at percentages of who's going to win because you just don't know in these games. There's so much uncertainty due to the emotions that run heavy. And it's just kind of, it's tough for me to really talk about how much of an, an advantage a team has because you just never know. Um, the second deciding factor for me is going to be the turnover battle. I think that this is a, a huge thing um, when it comes to both of these teams. They have two quarterbacks that um, you know have had instances to where they haven't done a great job of holding on to the football. Devin Leary has 20 touchdowns on the season to go along with nine interceptions. So he has done a, a job that he hasn't necessarily um, 
really prioritized not turning the ball over at times. And Jack Plummer really has been sort of the same way with 19 touchdowns to go with 10 interceptions. So, I mean, if you asked who has been the better quarterback this year, I would probably tell you Plummer. But I think that as good as both of these quarterbacks can be, there's also issues with ball security, with decision-making at times, and it is shown in the interceptions column. Both of these quarterbacks almost combining for 20 interceptions on the season. So I know that the secondaries of both of these respective teams have had moments to where they have gotten um, – you know, overall gashed, but I still think that there, 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 there is talent on both of these defenses to create those turnovers, especially with the pass rush that both of these teams have, the defensive linemen that they have as well. So the turnover battle is going to be a deciding factor with this game. It's going to be key with the field position. It's going to be key with overall creating that momentum because as the emotions are going to be there, they're not going to subside, you know, unless this becomes another blowout. And hopefully if that's the case, then it is in favor of the Cardinals. But emotions are going to run heavy all game. And Uncle Mo is going to be a real phenomenon. Momentum is going to be a huge focal point for both of these teams trying to create big time plays because big time plays is really what has defined this rivalry in the past um, 20 years or so. So I look for that to be the second deciding factor for me. The third deciding factor, and two and three are sort of tied, is big plays. Which defense can prevent the most big plays? And which offense can create the most big plays? I think that both of these defenses have shown themselves being vulnerable at defending the big play. We saw it the past two weeks for Louisville against Virginia, against Miami. Both of those offenses had big time plays, big yardage plays downfield. And that is one of the big weaknesses for Louisville is that if you're going to defeat this Cardinals defense, one of the best ways to do so is to take the top off of the defense. And I think that that's one of the main things for Ron English's unit specifically is limiting the big plays. You're going up against a very electric skill position group. Ray Davis is a solid running back that thrives in um, missed tackles. Barry and Brown is an electric receiver that is great yards after catch. Dane Key is solid as well, etc. And then you look at the Louisville side of the football. If Jawar Jordan is healthy, even if he's at a you know 70, 75%, he still is a big play candidate. You have a guy like Isaac Garendo, who's been very good at creating big plays. And then you have a solid group of receivers. If Jamari Thrash is able to play, he has big play uh, capabilities. Kevin Coleman Jr., we saw on that touchdown, catch and run, Amari Huggins, Bruce, etc. So they're on both sides, you have the personnel to create big plays, both for the Louisville and Kentucky offense and the Kentucky and Louisville defense. Main thing for me is limiting the big play. Who's going to have more big plays? I think it's going to have a direct correlation with the amount of success that both of these two teams have. So you look at the keys or the deciding factors for the Cardinals. Um, number one is handling emotions. If you're able to handle your emotions and channel it into a positive way, it's going to be a huge deciding factor. Which team can limit their turnovers and even force turnovers? Winning the turnover battle is going to be key. And which team will limit the big plays? Those are the three deciding factors for me. I'm really looking forward to seeing how Louisville comes out in this performance against the Wildcats. Um, but specifically, there's two players that I'm watching for on this Louisville offense and the Louisville defense. Personally, for me, in a rivalry game, you look for your stars to shine the brightest. Jack Plummer, Ashton Gelati are the two key players to watch in this game. I don't care if it sounds cliche, it is the truth. And we're going to talk about why that is here in just a moment after we talk about our friends over at Game Time. You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. If you're looking to try to get tickets to the Louisville-Kentucky game, don't worry any longer. Game time is the place to go with the last-minute deals, all-in prices, and views from your seat 
along with their best price guarantee, it takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. For me, Game Time is the best last minute ticket um, service that you can utilize. And with the guarantee, it means that you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and roll for less, Game Time will credit 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On College for twenty dollars off of your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code Locked On College. L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Final segment of this Friday edition of the Locked On Louisville podcast. We're talking about the two players to watch for the Cardinals on, well, on offense and defense. Offensively, it's Jack Plummer. I don't usually like going with the quarterback in this hypothetical segment because it's lazy, it's cliche, but context absolutely matters. It is pound for pound the biggest game of the season in terms of Context, program, morale, etc. You can argue Notre Dame. You can argue Miami. It's Kentucky, in my opinion. You need to win this game. To do that, Jack Plummer is going to have to play well. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I think that he's going to have to be efficient. He's going to have to be able to be confident in his reads downfield, and he's going to be able. To, he's going to have to be able to handle the emotions not only of the crowd, but of the team that he's going up against. Because you can say what you want about how this Kentucky team is playing. One thing that you cannot say about Mark Stoops' team when they play Louisville is that they come out flat in these games. They're always amped. They always care a ton, and they're passionate about it. And it shows on the field. Jack Plummer is going to have to battle that off. I said a couple days ago that the game against Miami was his best performance as a Louisville Cardinal. When the team needed him the most, he stepped up, he did what he needed to do, and he delivered throws in a timely manner. He scored touchdowns, and he did so effectively and throwing the ball efficiently. Same case here in this game against Kentucky. It's going to matter even more. Granted, now he's at home where he has been very solid, but they're going to try some different looks at him. It's going to be on Jack Plummer to make the throws that he's supposed to make, um, being confident in his reads um, and delivering the throws on time. And if he's able to do that, this Kentucky defense could be in for a long day. So offensively for me, you could go with a couple different guys. I don't want to go with Jawar Jordan because I'm not sure how healthy he's going to be. I almost went with Isaac Garendo because running the football is going to be key and the Cardinals need to establish the run to try to do what they do best on offense, which is, um, you know, use the, run to then um, just absolutely unleash the passing offense. For me, Jack Plummer is the player to watch offensively. I went back and forth defensively. I'm going to go with Ashton Gelati. Big-time players make big-time plays in big-time games. This is going to be a huge game for Gelati. This is a potential career-defining moment here at Louisville. He's already a fan favorite. He's a fantastic player, but he has a chance to cement himself as a Louisville legend with a big performance against the Wildcats. He has 10 sacks on the season, three forced fumbles, 39 total tackles. All of these are career highs. He has a fumble recovery. He has had his best year to date. The 6'3", Boca Raton, Florida native, has been everything that the Cardinals have needed and more. But this is going to be a game to where... A lot of eyes are going to be on him as the Cardinals star pass rusher. I almost went with a combination of Mason Riger and Stephen Heron because there's going to be so much focus on Gelati. But even then, I decided to go with the best defender on this team because of the stakes, because of the opponent, because of the stage that is being set. To get to a spot where you're 11 and 1, still in the conversation for a college football playoff spot, and going into that game against Florida State with a ton of momentum, you have to defeat a rival that you have not been all that competitive against since 2017. Your best players need to make big time plays and have big time performances. Kentuckys have done so since 2018. It's time for Louisville to do the same thing. Jack Plummer on offense, Ashton Gelati on defense. 
Dalton Pence's players to watch. I want to hear from you all. Who do you feel are the players to watch for this Louisville offense and this Louisville defense? Give me one player name for each side of the football. But the game is just around 24 hours away, 12 o'clock noon kickoff at LNN Stadium. We'll see you right back here very soon. Most importantly, go Cards.